Hello everyone, this is Damla Aktekin with A Drop of Om and today I want to talk to you about what I feel is the biggest benefit of healing or self-healing with crystals and why I feel that they're safe for you for meditation, for um, contemplation, for intentional healing. So first of all, um, in my healing journey, I want to say that um, my journey with crystals continues to change and evolve and every time I, I look at them I am meditating with them I'm learning something new every time I dive into a crystal healing I'm discovering something new but I want to give you what I feel is literally the biggest thing that they are here to teach us or or more correctly we are here to learn from them and when i mean crystals i mean minerals i mean the mineral kingdom whatever composition and combination they may be in so um when i look at crystals i mean there are our um, ancestors right they have been around so much longer than us they have been around for millennia for trillions and trillions of years and they also make up the the known universe the universe that we can see is made up of minerals and crystals the planets are made up of minerals and crystals the stars the sun is sort of like a liquid um, mineral concoction um, and we are also made up of minerals um, our, our bones are 65% or more mineral, our tissue fascia is actually like a liquid crystal that has crystalline properties that carries electricity, that holds information and transmutes it and carries it around in our bodies um, through the electrical or meridian highways. And as, as such, the crystals are, and I was asking this question of what do crystals do what do crystals like to do and the closest answer and the simplest answer that i could come to when i asked that question in my contemplation was that um they simply are they are and they have been for <laughs> millions and millions of years so from when i when i tune into them with with that um wish to understand them what i sense into is that they like to be they like to observe and they like to evolve and their observation is n not like ours we have you know we have the um the shorter timelines of a lifetime and then um you know uh if you're if you work with that assumption we move from timeline and lifetime to lifetime but it, from their point of view their observation takes a whole lot longer so they have the longer view and not only that because just like us they take in they observe they take in electromagnetic information and they can store it so they have access to this immense wisdom from millennia the immense wisdom of knowing all the cycles of life, all the cycles of their life, as well as all, as all the cycles of the cosmos. So they have that advantage. They have a different time um, view than us. And they're very much interested in being and they're very comfortable in being. Is they have a different different way of experiencing what we call life and I was asking myself why would crystals want to um, connect with us or why would we be drawn to them and why would would they be drawn to us and the answer came to me and the answer in my opinion is that um, they like to observe us because we are sort of like a liquid form of them. We move a lot quicker, not just through our lifetime, but through our 
our choices and our evolution and our, our being is a lot more fluid compared to them. And I imagine that must be in, enjoyable for them to absorb. We're, we're so different from them, yet we're the same. We have crystalline properties and crystalline structures, and we are able to um, move and change even moment to moment. Our cells are changing, our breathing is changing, um, where we are in our, our life cycle is changing, how we relate to others is changing. So. I, I imagine that would be very, very um, interesting for a crystal to watch and observe. And then I was asking this question also, like, what's, what are we here to learn from them? And the answer was, um, it comes from what I was explaining before, like they, they are, they like to be, they like to observe and they like to evolve. And that evolution is, is a lot of, there's a lot of acceptance in that evolution of their, their state and as well as um, knowledge of the cycles of life. And they like to be, and I think for us as fast moving multidimensional quantum structures, that's very attractive, that quality of just being, that um, quality of patience and that, um, that knowledge that we can tap into of this cycle will pass, this cycle will pass. How about um, their, their message being, the crystal's message to us being an invitation to, to be, to be in this moment, wherever in your developmental evolutionary cycle you're in and wherever um, collective cycle point we are in um, all together. As, as the human and, and earth community. So my, you know, suggestion to you is to, um, to be with this, to see if this rings true for you, um, to feel into it and to see, I mean, they are so pleasant to look at and they're so pleasant to hold and there's no judgment in them and they're parts of nature and to me, like all of those combined, they are a reminder for us to, to seize assumptions, seize expectations, seize judgments and just be. And there's tremendous relief in that just beingness. And there's, there's trust in the cycles. There's also um, a sort of silent acceptance when you give yourself just five minutes of being with a crystal. So I want you to just feel into the see if this rings true for you, um, which brings me to the question of the safety of working or healing and partnering with crystals or co-creating what I call co-creating with crystals. And to me, it comes back to the same question of what are crystals and what are they here interested in? in this reality. And to me, again, they're interested in being, observing, relating to us in that observation because we are, we must be fascinating to them. We're just so powerful, yet we don't always know our power and we evolve so quickly. And um, they're also interested in evolution, but again, their timeline is much more relaxed. <laughs> than ours like we're always in a rush they're never in a rush so we have um we have a lot to teach each other and learn from each other and in terms of safety like when i look at crystals with with this point of view like it can't i can't imagine a part of nature um wanting to or intentionally hurting me i should preface this by saying in my like years and years of experience partnering and healing with crystals as well as assisting others in their healing as a healer with crystals. I have never had a negative or an adverse or a non-life affirming experience with crystals in particular. Um, and my response to this is perhaps this is my 
Aquarian openness to <laughs> all things, you know, um, airy and fun and, and unique. But it's also, um, I've never thought of crystals as non-safe. In, it's in the same way, like I don't look at a tree and think that that tree is not safe for me. Crystals to me are our nature, they're our building blocks, they are our ancestors, they're so much older than us and, and they're so much better at us in, in staying connected to all crystals in the multiverse and all life. So it hasn't occurred to me to think that they may not be safe and that has never been my experience. That said, can crystals, uh, we talked about them, taking in information, electrical information, can they take on other people's, other beings' intention? Absolutely. But I found that it's, it's so simple. It's so simple to hold an intention of clearing them and they're cleared. You just hold them through sage smoke and, and you say, may this crystal be cleared. And they are very, very open to... Um, shaking loose whatever doesn't belong to them and and i teach this in my online courses i actually um in all the crystal healings that i have in my crystal healing membership there are protective measures in place as a healer um, i sort of hold and create a gentle loving container for you so it's done for you you can feel safe whenever you listen to any of these healings but I also want to say that when you're clearing a crystal, um, just remember that it's it's um, it's not the sage smoke that clears the crystal. It's not the you know you put it on the windowsill and the moonlight comes in. Yes, there's an effect, but it's more your intention. And if you approach them with a loving and kind intention of connecting with a kin, with a um, loving and gentle um, uh, sister or a brother, <laughs> if you will, because they are they are so much like us in 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 terms of structural properties. Um, they just have a have a different way of um, moving through life, a different pace than us. So if you approach them, what I found is that if you approach them with this loving kindness, you get that loving kindness in return. So I'm going to leave you with this. This is again my perspective. I would love to hear yours. What you feel is the biggest benefit that you have found so far with about healing with crystals. And if you're new to healing with crystals, just go to a drop of om.com. There's a ton of information there. And, um, you know, this is an invitation to say, I'm ready, willing, and able, and I would like to um, try this connection with with the crystal and see see what I can learn, see what they can teach me, and see what they what they might learn from me and reflect back to me. So I leave you with that. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. <laughs>